Namaste and a warm welcome. So today we'll be discussing on how to create a custom IR remote. So recently I was facing a remote crisis and I wanted to develop a common remote for multiple devices because I cannot do something like this. So let's begin. Let's now discuss about the schematic. It's pretty simple and straightforward. We have three AAA batteries in series, an 80 tiny 85 based module, and we have an IR transmitter. Now we have three buttons. First button is for power of TV or AC. Second one is for volume minus and temperature minus. And the third button is for volume plus and temperature plus. Apart from these buttons, we have a switch for selection of the device. You can see that all the three buttons are externally pulled up while the switch is internally pulled up on PV2 pin. As we can see that the module of ATtiny85 has PV1 pin already connected to an LED on board. Now we don't need this LED because we are going to use this pin as an input. So we'll be removing it in the shouldering part. All right, moving on to the shouldering part. So first we'll be shouldering the header pins to the ATtiny based module. And once we are done with that, we'll be taking a zero PCB and putting all the remaining components on it and shouldering it. So now it's time to remove that LED that we were talking about in the earlier section. Finally, once the shouldering is finished, we'll be putting together the structure to use. Of course, if you have a 3D printer, you can print a case for the remote. Since I don't have access to it right now, I would be proceeding it as it is. You can put the three AAA batteries, as already said, and turn on the remote. Up ahead, we have building and uploading the code. We'll be using Microchip Studio as our ID for development. We have already covered how to build your code and create external tools in order to upload it finally to your chip. You can have a look at that video which is already on the channel. Next I would like to talk on a certain topic. While doing all this, I had made a mistake in one of the 80tiny85 chip. What I did was that I disabled the reset fuse bit and due to this I was no longer able to program it using the USB ASP based SPI programmer because SBI protocol uses a reset pin. Huh. On searching further on the internet, what I found was that in order to re-enable the fuse bit, I need a high voltage programmer like an AVR STK500. So we have discussed the transmitting part. Now in the tech talks, we have to discuss that without a remote, how are we going to send the data? I mean, what is the data? So for that, we will be needing first a 38 kilohertz IR receiver and second, a mobile phone with an IR blaster. Luckily, I had an old MI phone available with me. So I'll be showing you how to do it on that. You can use any phone with an IR blaster. So in the IR remote app, there is a plus icon on the top left corner. On going to that, on clicking that particular icon, you can see a bunch of devices supported by this app and on clicking off any of one of the device you can find plenty of manufacturer data on clicking on any of the manufacturer you can go through a number of configuration and point your mobile phone towards your device and see if the particular configuration works for you or not here i would like to conclude two important things First is that it's not necessary that for your particular device, the same name or manufacturer make IR configuration works for you. For example, my television was of Onida brand, but the IR configuration that worked for it was from Sensui. And my AC was from manufacturer Lloyd, while the configuration that worked for it was from Voltas. Secondly, in the IR configuration that you have selected, 
check all the functions that you need for my case it was power a volume plus volume minus in case of tv and power and temperature minus and temperature plus in case of my ac so you just check whether all of those functions are related exactly as it is shown on the configuration or not because sometimes what happens is the mapping of ir code can be different for example pressing channel plus on a configuration could increase the volume on your device for instance so you just check all the features once you're done let's move on for looking into the raw data of our IR communication, we'll be using a logic analyzer and connect it with the IR receiver. The connection is pretty simple. You have to connect the signal of that IR receiver to channel zero of this analyzer and ground to ground. And we'll be using a separate DC power module to power our IR receiver with five volts. Now we'll press the power button of our TV IR remote in the mobile phone and point it towards our IR receiver. So here's our data available with us. We'll be analyzing it. You can observe that we have the main data and then we have repeat signals. So let's observe the main section. So in it, the first is a 9 millisecond burst signal. Next is a 4.5 millisecond low period. Then we have our data, main data. In that we have zeros and ones, right? For the timing of zero, a 500 microsecond burst, then a 500 microsecond low period defines a zero. A 500 microsecond burst and then a 1.7 millisecond low defines a logical one. We'll be discussing that in a coming section. So you can clearly observe here that we have eight zeros and five one in this particular section of data. So here in this article, you can see the screenshot of an oscilloscope with the message frame and a repeat signal. Pretty much similar to what we have received on a logic analyzer. Also here it is mentioned the timing in the message frame itself, along with the timing for a logical one and logical zero is already discussed. You can read this article later on in the next article we'll be seeing the differentiation between a modulated signal and a demodulated signal as it is clearly observable that both of the signal are invert to each other i'll be putting a link to this article and the earlier one in the description below so this was for the logic analyzer next we'll be using esp32 with our IR receiver and Arduino IR remote library. This library really takes off a lot of work from you by recognizing the protocol as well. There are quite a number of protocols like NEC, RC5, Samsung, etc. etc. So we have connected our ESP32 with our IR receiver according to the pinout given in pin definitions file. We can proceed further by uploading this code and then opening our terminal window with the proper baud rate. Now we will point our IR remote, that is our mobile phone, towards the receiver. So here you can see that for the AC power off, what is the data? Next data is for power on, then subsequently for the temperatures. So you one more thing is clear that different temperature has different data to be sent. Total, the data that you can see is 35 bits first and 31 bits next. So the width of data that is to be sent for AC is quite large. Next, when you press the power button for the TV mode, you can observe that it decodes it as NEC and subsequently puts forward the address and command. One more thing is that power on and power off of TV is same as compared to AC. So what data we came across earlier is the exact data that we need to send in our code 
and we are using IR sequence AC and IR sequence TV as the respective method to send that particular data. If you have a logic analyzer with you, you can compare your data from both of these instances. If not, you can only use a USB 32 or Arduino to decode the data. Hope this video was clear and can help you in making one of your own IR remote. Now enjoy the application. क्या आपको भी है इलेक्ट्रॉनिक और टेक्नोलॉजी से प्यार तो अब की बार चैनल को लाइक शेयर और सब्सक्राइब करो यार ये तो करो ना भाई क्यों नहीं कर रहे